affecting record. So I've asked this lovely question on how do I stay awake or conscious? And there's two aspects to that. One is, I would, I mean, say, you know, pray f prayers for willingness and intentionality and uh, step three, commitment, you know, surrendering one's life to the divine, to God. Because you want to make, the thing is your ego is not going to remind you to, to let go of being in the head or in fear. With the, the, um, the job of the ego is to keep you away from being conscious. So the ego is not going to do it. So how can you have your spirit, if you like, how can you have something deeper within you, keep reminding you and keep you on track and not to get lost in the forest of your ego, always trying to distract you into the, into the forest of egotism, shall we say? Well, that is for, for me making a profound commitment to be free, to be conscious and make that at the level of the heart. So that's what surrender is. It, for me, surrender can't be just made at the level of the head. It just won't stick because your head's not on your side uh, for that. So, but I think some of the most powerful prayers are praying for willingness, uh, whatever spiritual tool you're using, whether it's the Course in Miracles, whether it's 12 Steps, whether um, whatever it is that you do on a daily basis to stay in the conscious, because there is a certain point, you know, enlightenment when you don't have to do any more spiritual work. It's self-sustaining. It's like easier to stay enlightened than to go into the ego. Now that that's not, I wouldn't say that's that many people are in that profound state. Otherwise for the rest of us, um, making a heartfelt commitment to keep making spiritual progress and to get to deeper and higher levels of consciousness, spiritual awareness, uh, freedom from fear, freedom from thinking, um, is to, you know, uh, what I'd recommend is praying for the willingness like for myself, it could be uh, praying for the willingness to go to any lengths to be in the observer throughout the day, or pray for the willingness to go to any lengths to apply my Course in Miracle lessons throughout the day. Um, and, and also the thing is, when there's that drive to become free of the ego, it's like the more uh, you do spiritual work, the easier it gets, and the easier it gets to do more spiritual work. So it's like a, it's like a positive, um, a positive uh, circle. The more one hasn't got that inner deep heartfelt commitment or is it doing things, I think 12 Steps, Course in Miracles, Dr. Hawkins' teachings, they give uh, spiritual seekers um, the tools to have the shortcuts to cut out the ego and its games from making you lose, lose track that you're on a spiritual journey and go off into diversionary avenues which take you more into the ego rather than to, to get higher and higher levels of freedom. I think one of the most lovely things with that is, I, I actually found Dr. Hawkins' map of consciousness, I saw it true. One of the things to grab the ego and realize, and so that it finds it hard to go down in consciousness rather than up, is the map of consciousness and the levels of consciousness. I mean, it's obvious that I wanna be more and more conscious, more and more happy, more and more free, have more and more flow in my life and have more and more miracles and synchronicities. So that means I have to get more and more of a heartfelt commitment to go deeper and deeper within to those deeper states of spiritual awakening, uh, spiritual love, infinite love, uh, infinite freedom from the thinking head, and those infinite states of oneness with, with God and life. So that has to, that is actually my own experience happens through that inner commitment of the spiritual student to always make a commitment to become more and more conscious and more and more free. And it's like the spiritual student is always looking to increase the intensity of spiritual work, to do any things that shortcut the process so that one can get even more profoundly into these states of, of peace and presence. That for me seems to be very heady in the beginning, but for me it's not because if I'm doing the Course in Miracles throughout the day, if I'm trying to be in the observer throughout the day, almost having this moment to moment intensity or, or vigilance to go deeper into consciousness, deeper into spiritual awakening, uh, that starts to become self-sustaining. It's like the spirit starts to gain ground and the head, which is always trying to distract one into the forest of, of thinking and distractions, uh, gets weaker and weaker. So it's more like the, the spirit starts to take over control over time. Uh, if you go into, um, so that's the way uh, to uh, go into deeper levels of awakening and not get lost 
you know, having a, having a spiritual, I think one of the great things with Hawkins was the thing of um, giving an idea of which teachings take you on the fast track to getting rid of your ego, um, which teachings are slower and what you think. In a way, it's very simplistic um, or to get to enlightenment, but I think what's uh, missing, even a simple message will do, is the ferocity of the inner intentionality and inner spiritual commitment to let go. Because the, the ego, the ferocity of addiction to thinking, the ferocity of addiction to being in fear and in defects of character, or the seven deadly sins, is so immense that to overcome it requires an inner intentionality and an inner heartfelt commitment and a and a, if you like almost a ferocious moment by moment commitment to go deeper and deeper inwards rather than let the ego and its habitual addictions to thinking and negative emotions take over which is quite easy so i'll stop that stop it.